What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today we're going to be talking about blade shapes in a very generic and laid back sense. I think the worst thing I could possibly do when talking about blade shapes is be incredibly specific. Number one, because everybody has different usage habits, and number two, I'm not a professional on anything. I'm not a knife maker, uh, I'm not a professional on edge geometry, I'm not a professional ed, uh, uh, metallurgist, um, and I don't use my knives hard enough and consistently enough or, um, you know, in variance, like I don't use, uh, you know, different types of blade shapes, you know, often enough to really be able to, to definitively say, stuttering all over the place, definitively say exactly what is good for what. This is going to be very generic information and you kind of have to take it and apply it to what you m would be using your knife for. Um, we finally have an overhead view. Thank God, I finally got a, uh, I got rid of that stupid old tripod and got uh, an arm that allows me to do this overhead thing, which is way better, you know, it, it gives you guys a way better perspective on the things that I'm talking about, so that's awesome. Now all we have to do is fix the lighting. The lighting sucks, but it'll do for right now. If you are new to my channel, I like to do knife reviews, knife overviews, I like to do unboxings, I like to do discussion topics such as the one you're viewing right now, and I have a Knife Guy series on Sundays. Um, I also like to upload regularly, every single day, sometimes I upload twice a day. So if you like knife content and you like regular uploads, this might be the channel for you. Go ahead and hit subscribe and turn notifications to all because there's definitely more content coming. I also like to give knives away. I have this beautiful Protec Mass Drop Mordax that I'm uh, ready to give away uh, the moment that I hit 60 patrons. We're currently at 50. And uh, basically, as soon as we hit 60, I will open this up as a giveaway to everybody, not just patrons, literally everybody who's paying attention. So if you're scribed, you'll get a notification uh, on the day that, uh, or the, the day that that, uh, that happens. Um, the, uh, a lot of the knives you're seeing here are not mine. They're actually provided for review um, by some generous uh, viewers. And then I pay to have these shipped back with full insurance. So the money that I get from Patreon really helps support me in that sense. And it really kind of keeps the cobs, uh, cogs of this channel lubricated and everything moving smoothly. Um, so I really appreciate the people who have been helping me out there. Whether you want to support the channel or you want to help me reach the goal or you know, whatever, if you are interested in supporting me, you can follow the link in the description to my Patreon, have a look around, and then if you want to, you can join any tier. If you want to just keep watching my channel and supporting me, uh, in that way, you can also do that. It's much appreciated. Anyways, so here's the way that I'm going to go about this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be very generic. Um, the general rule of thumb is when you're looking, uh, when you're considering a, a blade shape is, um, you know, you're, you're, thinking about how much material there is in any given area of the blade. Now, there's there's a lot more that goes into that. The starting thickness of the blade, the height of the blade, whether or not there's a flat, what type of grind you're looking at, whether it's a flat grind coming off the spine or whether it's a hollow grind or a con, uh, convex grind, um, whether or not it's a tanto with two different cutting edges, you know, if the blade curves down or if it curves up, there's a million different things. On top of that, you have the steel type. You have whether or not the blade was even heat treated correctly. You have whatever type of media you're cutting through. So that's what I mean. Like if I covered every, la and that's not even everything there is. I mean, and, and on top of that, I don't have every single blade shape out here. I have a lot of common ones and some uncommon ones, but I'm going to do my best to cover it given what I have. Um, if I were to talk about every last little thing there was, um, number one, it would be like six hours long and nobody would watch it. And number two, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm not qualified to give all that information. So I only want to speak, you know, to, to what I know, and that's going to be pretty general. Uh, so this video is mainly directed at newcomers or people kind of getting into this. And, you know, if they're going to spend more money on some higher end stuff, then, uh, then I want to help them get what they want and help them, uh, you know, uh, get what they expect out of their blade. So, um, like I was saying, you know, let, uh, more material in any given area is generally going to make that area of the knife stronger. Less material may make it a little bit weaker, but it might make it easier for the blade to pass through material, whether it be puncturing or cutting, pushing down, you know, etc. A good example of that in the drop point blade, you can see here we have a, a, a flat up top, and that carries the um, thickness of the blade, which is about 125 thousandths out to about uh, I don't know, about 75%, 80% the length of the blade, and then that part finally tapers down to the tip. And then you have an area here that drops down to the cutting edge. Um, we have another blade, another drop point blade right here, that's about the same thickness, but it's much longer. 
So it tapers out to an incredibly fine tip and there's no flat, which means the thickness, you know, right here at maximum thickness is ever tapering. Whereas here, it doesn't actually start to taper to the tip until the end of the flat. Also, because there's no flat, it means it starts tapering to the cutting edge, despite them being close to the same height, it starts tapering towards the cutting edge immediately. So you should actually have a thinner, a, 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 you know, and I, I don't have calipers to test this, but given the shapes of these blades, it should be thinner behind the edge a little bit on the um, Native Chief, and it actually should be a little bit more pokey up top. So this should be, in theory, better at pokey tasks or puncture tasks, and a little bit better at, you know, just gliding through material in general. Does that mean this is a better knife? Not necessarily, because where this knife might, you know, lack in the same type of puncture uh, ability as the Native Chief, and the same type of slicing ability as the Native Chief, um, it actually has a different type of belly. So going through different things might yield better results, and it's going to be a little bit stronger in a situation where you might be kind of wrenching the blade around a little bit and doing things that you wouldn't normally do with a cutting tool. Um, on the opposite side of that, a uh, drop point blade that's ground in a way that emphasizes strength over the Doug Ritter here. This is the Ritter RSK MK1 G2. This is a Hinder XM18 with the drop point blade. You can see here it's substantially thicker and has a different flat and it's got a swedge up top where this one doesn't have it. Um, the uh, flat carries out, honestly, it's in about the same place, um, but the drop down to the cutting edge here isn't quite as tall, so there's more room to drop and this blade's thinner. So this blade isn't going to emphasize cutting ability over this one, and it's not necessarily going to emphasize puncture ability over this one, but in both areas, it's got more material and should, in theory, be a little bit stronger, which is why oftentimes you hear about the Hinder XM18 being more hard use oriented. Um, the blades are ground in a way that emphasize um, toughness. Now, does that mean that this is not good at cutting tests and not good at puncture tests? No, it's just more material in those areas and overall. So it's just going to have a harder time going through material than this knife. But in some situations, you might want that. Um, beyond that, I've got an example of drop point here that actually has two different grinds and can actually affect how the blade passes through media uh, in, in an even different way or even, you know, an, another element, basically another layer to that. Um, the initial grind here down to the cutting edge, despite this being close to the same dimensions, you know, in terms of like the starting blade thickness, they're about the same. This is 150 thousandths, this is 165 thousandths. They're about the same length of blade, but the shape is a little bit different. Where, I mean, even though the flat carries out to the same length, you have on the Hinder XM18, it's a flat ground blade all the way through, up by the tip and down at the uh, cutting edge. Whereas this one's got a hollow grind initially coming down to the cutting edge and then a separate flat grind up at the top. So you still, this gets really thin. In fact, thinner than the uh, Hinder XM18. So it's gonna cut a little bit better down here. But if you kept that material, the same thinness all the way out to the tip, then you would have a little bit of, you know, a weaker tip. You'd be better cutting performance than the XM18 uh, drop point, but a weaker tip. And you know, maybe in a knife like this, you may not want that. Well, because this upper, this area up here is flat ground, there's more material up here behind the tip. So this is gonna be a little stronger than it would be otherwise. Um, it also kind of, not as much as a tanto, but it kind of gives you two different edges there. So none of those blades that I just showed are necessarily better or worse overall. They're just variants of the exact same blade shape um, that are more or less suited for different things. Beyond that, Another type of um, edge here is a recurve, basically how this is ground down at the edge. This recurve kind of goes this way and then swoops down into the belly and comes back up. You can see here it's, again, a lot the same or, you know, very, very much the same as some of the previous uh, drop points that I showed. Um, the, um, the flat only carries out to about here and then it immediately starts tapering. So it might be a little bit weaker at the tip than the Chavez 229 of the Hinder XM18, but because of the thickness and you know how far that thickness carries out and once you, what you have for material left over once you get to the tip, probably a little bit stronger than um, the, um, the Doug Ritter RSK MK1 G2 and probably definitely a little stronger at the tip than the, uh, uh, the Native Chief. Um, the edge down here, like I said, curves in and then back out. So you have that cutting belly, but there's a little bit more of an area where um, as you're cutting into media, it's a little bit more guided, meaning the, um, as you start to cut, a recurve will draw material into the belly a little bit better than an area like this where it's kind of just like wherever you start cutting, it goes. 
both are going to be plenty fine, you know, for slicing tasks. Um, this one's just going to feel a little bit more natural. Now, of course, the geometry is different. The overall shape's different. If you were comparing this exact thickness of blade, this exact shape, everything was the same except one was a recurve and one wasn't, then, you know, it would be a little bit more definitive in terms of how each one uh, acts on, on the same type of uh, media. But it's just a variant of, of the edge. Um, um, this this uh, blade shape always escapes me. I always look at this and call it a scimitar. Um, but you can see here the flat carries out only about halfway uh, down the uh, blade. You start out at about, it looks to be about 145 thousandths and immediately starts tapering towards the tip. Now, because this tip, the overall height of the blade is not quite as tall as the last one that we just looked at. You can see here there is much less material at that tip than there is this tip. So this one's going to be a little bit weaker at the tip. It's got a nice belly. It's probably going to cut just fine, um, uh, you know, in terms of just your general cutting task. But it also doesn't drop from the f full thickness of the blade. It doesn't start dropping until about right here. So it doesn't have as far to drop as this one either. So, you know, it's, I mean, like, just sort of use that information and apply it to the, what we've, we've I've, I've pointed out here um, just a second ago. Um, the longer, the, the thinner the starting point, you know, from where it drops, um, and the taller the blade is, the thinner it's going to be behind the edge. So it's not necessarily good or bad, it's just different from the previous one. So, um, you know, there's, it's this kind of a, a situation where it's thin enough to cut, you know, and it's going to cut okay, um, but because of its long slender nature, there's not, it's not going to get, you know, laser thin behind the edge, but the tip definitely gets super thin. So in terms of puncture tasks, that type of blade shape is really going to excel, but you have to be wary about, you know, how much material there is behind the edge. This is Spyderco's version of a clip point, or at least that's what I call it. Um, this blade is flat ground. Um, you can see here the starting thickness. It's got quite a ways to go before the cutting edge. So um, this has got, you know, not a super, not, not a ton of material down here. So it's going to be pretty good as most flat ground blades are that are really tall. It's going to be pretty, uh, fairly thin behind the edge. And it's also because there's not a lot of material here at the tip. Again, it's going to be pretty good at puncture tasks. Um, a lot of times Spyderco's, um, you know, kind of short flat ground blades that are, you know, thin at the tip, um, they excel at EDC style tasks because the, you, you don't necessarily need, uh, you know, in, in general EDC tasks, like if you're cutting through just like cardboard or paper or rope, you know, soft generic materials, you don't necessarily need a lot of qualities in your, in your blade um, that uh, emphasize strength. So oftentimes, you know, like the Spyderco Manix 2, the Spyderco PM2, and the Para 3, those are really, really popular EDC blades because their thinness at, at the tip and, and in the belly and the continuous belly, you know, those are all um, aspects of a folding knife that, um, you know, people like, uh, uh, in, when, in, you know, for generic EDC tasks. A more traditional clip point, I think, is better emphasized in this uh, hinder or ranch bowie. You can see here, the reason that they call it a clip point is because it, it looks like a drop point blade where somebody just clipped this chunk out of it. Um, so you don't have nearly the strength down at the tip of a clip point. Um, you know, this is obviously, this is a fixed blade, which adds a whole nother element to durability and potential for durability. Um, but uh, generally speaking, boy, that's sharp. Holy cow, <laughs> just shaved my, a little bit of dead skin off my finger. Um, you have a blade stock thickness that starts out at 187 thousandths and tapers to this super pointy tip. So in terms of puncture tasks, it's going to be great. And in terms of slicing tasks, it's going to be great. Um, you can see the height of the blade. This is a pretty tall blade and the taper starts pretty high. So despite it being thick, it's actually going to excel at, uh, you know, those types of tasks. It's also really long. So if you're cutting into anything that's I, I guess really, really thick. I always use a pineapple as an example. Um, a blade like this is going to get through something like that a little bit easier, maybe poke into it a little bit easier. Obviously, there's a million more things that I could use as an example, but I want to kind of keep the pace up here. Moving on, another uh, um, EDC uh, style blade shape that a lot of people prefer is the sheep's foot style blade. Now, the nice thing about a sheep's foot is that you can see here the spine kind of continues, and now there's different variants of it. In fact, we'll talk about some different ones, but um, it kind of continues on the spine, and then there's this kind of casual drop, this sort of rounded drop down to what is actually the tip on the knife. Because of that drop, 
and how it's kind of you know just drops down here. It doesn't it doesn't come to a tip and then curve into uh, the belly. There actually ends up uh, you end up with quite a bit more material behind the edge than something like this. And not not just in terms of, of thickness at the tip, but in terms of height and the material. You know, as it, it's it's more of a in here it's more of a gradual taper, and in here it's more of a sudden taper. So there's just more metal back there backing up this tip. The end result is that you have a blade that may not be as good at puncturing, but man, if you really have to work that blade and move it around lateral force, um, this tip is going to stand up better than one you know that's the same thickness but ground in a different way at the tip. Um, generally, sheep's foot style blades look like a sheep's foot. That's I mean that's self-explanatory, but. Um, that's the idea behind the blade. You also generally do get cutting belly, so you'll get the cutting and slicing performance of a standard drop point blade with some belly. Um, a lot of people really, really like this grind for EDC. They can ask a little bit more of their blades, generally speaking, um, uh, you know, in terms of like, um, you know, wrenching your blade around and you, more hard use, heavy quotes, hard use oriented tasks, um, but still get that cutting performance they like. Um, with a thicker geometry, like the Curtis uh, uh, F3 medium here, you've got a nice thick blade, that same sort of casual drop towards the tip and some nice cutting belly. This knife is really gonna emphasize um, tip strength and workability of the blade overall and then cutting performance. So if you're doing things basically that don't require a lot of pokey tasks, like my EDC tasks, honestly, I do less puncture tasks than anything else. It's nice to have the tip of a drop point blade, but if I'm being honest, what I'm doing with my knives every day don't require me to do puncture style tasks, so I, I don't need it as much. You know, um, a sheep's foot style blade is really nice for EDC. Uh, moving on here, um, this is another blade shape that people are pretty familiar with. This is a Warncliffe. It's a pretty aggressive Warncliffe. You can see um, it doesn't have quite the extreme, um, you know, sudden taper of the sheep's foot style blade. It's a gradual taper down instead of a taper on a drop point, sort of sweeping up towards the tip, right? So what you end up with here is since it's dropping, you know, down and this uh, this blade is, is fairly long, you actually end up, despite this being a 187,000 stock thick blade, just like the Ranch Bowie, pointing right there, um, it actually ends up with a pretty fine tip. So it's a Warncliffe style blade, an aggressive Warncliffe style blade. You can, you know, effectively do some puncture tasks with it. Um, but because the edge is straight, which is, you know, that's typical of a, a traditional Warncliffe blade, it's not going to be as good. You can see the natural curvature as if when you're slicing, you know, the a slicing belly will follow that curvature as you slice. Since this is straight, it's not going to be as good at slicing tasks. But as far as push cuts, or draw cuts. A lot of people really, really like worn clips for that. People also like worn clips for um, uh, self-defense stuff. I don't know anything about self-defense, and I don't care. So I'm not going to talk about that. Um, that's not really what. Uh, that's not really my goal here with this. But um, same, same deal here. You know, less material at the tip because of the thickness of the blade and where it drops. Um, the edge is going to be um, thicker than your. Um, than your typical pocket knife, so it's gonna have some strength in the edge, depending, again, depending on the steel and the heat treat and blah, blah, blah. It's gonna have a little bit more edge stability because of the geometry, but it's gonna be a little bit more fragile at the tip than a Warncliffe that might look like this. This is a Warncliffe that has a very dramatic drop off. You can see there, um, the flat carries out um, a little bit further than it does on the XM18. Um, and uh, because of that dramatic drop, you have a lot more material behind the edge or behind this tip here. So you have to worry a lot less about anything breaking up here. Um, this is about the same area, the same distance to drop towards the cutting edge as the XM18. So it might be fairly similar behind the edge, but in this style of Warncliffe, you actually have cutting belly. So this particular style of Warncliffe actually might be a little bit better at some cutting tests. This is another fantastic blade shape for EDC style tasks, but again, you're a little bit more limited on puncture tasks. Can you still poke it into the side of a package or a box? Yeah, but if you really need to, to you know, puncture deep into something that's thick and dense, that's going to be a lot harder to do. Again, something like a pineapple. It's a lot easier to get into a pineapple with something like this than it is with something like this. That kind of goes without saying. Um, and, uh, this is a more obscure style of blade, but I'll show it here. Um, a better example probably would be like the Graham Razzle. 
Um, this is a, uh, it's, it's basically just 90 degrees. It's, it kind of looks like a chisel, not a chisel ground blade. That's different, but it kind of looks like a chisel. Um, you've got an edge here and you've got an edge here, and then there's a point at 90 degrees. So this is actually, you know, I guess you could call this the tip. The interesting thing about this is, is, you know, it's, it's not going to excel at, um, slicing tasks or anything like that, but sorry about that. I had to cut the video, but anyways, a blade like this isn't necessarily going to be good at slicing tasks because there's no belly. It's also thick and it's short and there's not a, a lot of uh, room for this to drop down to a nice thin cutting edge. So it's pretty thick, but um, where it lacks in cutting ability, it's certainly going to make up for in strength um, just because of its dimensions and how you know short it is and stubby. Um, this is going to be good for just regular cutting tasks. Um, it's also going to be good at like light prying tasks or scraping tasks, things like that. Obviously, you don't have a tip, so it's not going to be very good at puncturing. The other nice thing is because there's two completely separate edges, you can save one uh, edge for cutting tasks and, and, and use the other edge for scraper tasks. I can never remember if I've said one thing or another already. Um, obviously, a longer version of that blade is probably going to be a little bit more utilitarian. You're very limited with super teeny tiny blade shapes like that, but if what you're doing throughout the day doesn't ask any more than what you could ask of something that short, then maybe you don't necessarily need something longer. If a knife like that brings you enjoyment, there's no reason you can't carry it um, as long as it's going to, um, or no reason you shouldn't carry it as long as it's going to do everything you could possibly ask for it. The last blade shape I have here on the table is a Tanto. Now, this is a super robust variant of Tanto and it's also a fixed blade. So for those two reasons alone, as you can see, there's a lot of material in pretty much all areas of this knife. This is going to be an extremely um, durable uh, version of a Tanto that's going to emphasize strength over everything else. Uh, in a situation like this, this type of knife is, um, if you really need to have a knife as a pry bar, it's going to be great there. Because you've got so much material back here because the blade is so thick, and you can see how, how much room there is before the flat ends and it starts dropping towards the cutting edge, this is pretty thick behind the edge. Yeah, it's got a belly. It's going to be a little bit, uh, it's going to be a little bit better at slicing than the exact same blade with a straight edge, um, but uh, because there's so much material, the edge is going to be more durable than it is slicey um, in terms of just stability, you know, um, its ability to resist chipping. And again, that has to do with proper heat treat and type of steel and composition, of, you know, the composition of steel, blah, 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 blah. Tantos generally have two completely separate edges, kind of like what we we're talking about there with the, um, that, whatever you want to call that. Um, but it's not at 90 degrees. It just sort of, you know, is an angle right here. Most Tantos are straight. In fact, I have a better example, one that I just, a knife that I just don't like at all, so it's not here, but a typical Tanto is going to look like the Tanto on this Smith & Wesson. Um, so you can see there it's straight and then has a, um, an angle and goes right to the tip. Um, what this um, allows for is a combination of the ability to puncture and for the blade to generally be pretty strong. If you remember, as we went over each one of these different blade shapes, oftentimes what corresponds directly with the ability to puncture better than a different style of blade is also a lack in durability. With the Tanto, you actually get both of those things, but usually the inability to um, slice as, efficiency, as efficiently as a blade that has belly. Again, that's all generally speaking because the geometry and thickness and blah, blah, blah can all be different. Um, this is about as robust of a blade shape as I've ever seen. Uh, a blade shape like this that's just mega thick and has this flat that carries out super far, you get tip strength, um, you get you know strength up here in the, the, this, uh, this edge up here at this, um, the, the edge that's closer to the tip, you get strength in, in this part of the blade. I mean, a lot of times that's why you see that. Now, I'm not a soldier and I can't speak from experience because I don't have any experience, but in a, in a setting where you could imagine, you know, all the extremes of your environment are thrown at you and your knife is everything. It's, um, it's a, a cutting tool, it's a pry tool, it's a digging tool. Um, it's also um, a, a catalyst for self-defense. Um, it's everything. Um, in that situation, you might want to emphasize strength in a lot more areas um, than, you know, uh, you like a knife like this. Yeah, it's going to be great at cutting in an in a, in a environment that uh, has a lot of extremes, but you might want more durability in that situation. It's different for every single person um, and everybody's got different usage habits. So um, there's not really a best blade shape. I'm sure you guys could have guessed that 
you know, right at the beginning of the video. There's not a best blade shape. Truthfully, if you guys want to know what I prefer for EDC, actually, let me say this real quick. Um, if, uh, if I'm being honest here, um, what I use a knife for every day, I probably don't need anything more than this Victorinox Cadet here, right? Because I'm just cutting open letters and cardboard and whatever. But that's no fun. I like to carry other things. If you want to know um, what I think some of the best EDC, uh, the, the two best EDC blade shapes are, generally speaking, for tasks that would require, you know, just, just light, uh, like, like light duty stuff. And then it's like all of a sudden you got to cut a big thick strap and you might have to dig into something and pry a little bit, you know, just like like a normal um, uh, like uh, 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 range of potential things that you might have to use your knife for. I like a simple drop point blade and I like a nice sheep's foot blade. Um, these have a nice balance overall of strength and cutting performance. Not too extreme in any direction. The sheep's foot's going to be a little bit more durable, especially at the tip, and the drop point's going to be a little bit better at puncture tasks. Um, but uh, not, not quite as durable, you know. So these, these two blades, in my opinion, are going to be really, really great for EDC style tasks. That doesn't necessarily mean that if you like a clip point style blade or a Warncliffe blade or any other blade shape we talked about that you're wrong. If your blade cuts and it carries conveniently and it deploys the right way and it's safe and it's legal to carry and the people of your workplace don't have a problem with it, then you should carry whatever you want. That's pretty much all I can say about this topic, guys. I hope that you found it at least mildly entertaining. I have to imagine most people watching this video probably know this, everything that I've talked about and probably substantially more than me, but maybe if there are some new people watching this, I, I hope maybe I, I gave you some information that was uh, at least mildly helpful. If you enjoyed this video in any way, shape, or form, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.